thank you very much to the WIDS organizing committee for inviting me to give this presentation. And of course, I also have to thank Dr. Deborah Frinke for recommending me. And so before I get into my talk, I want to talk about secure data science. If you Google it, you wouldn't find, I don't think, many references to secure data science, although there are references to security data science. So what does it mean? To me, it's sort of integrating cybersecurity and data science, because both of them are really important areas, and they can benefit each other. You can apply data science for cybersecurity as well as cybersecurity for data science. In preparing my talk, I also took into consideration that this talk is going to be listened to by around 100,000 people. That's what Forbes magazine had reported. So there are women, and I'm assuming men also, all over the world, Nigeria, India, South America, Australia. So I wanted to give a talk that would sort of motivate everyone in this room as well as everyone who is listening to this presentation. So I want to start off with how I got here. So I am of Sri Lankan Tamil origin and I married when I was 20 in 1975, while I was finishing my undergraduate degree in mathematics and physics. It was an arranged marriage, and my husband was finishing his PhD at University of Cambridge. And so we got married, and soon after I finished my degree, a few months later, uh, I moved to England with my husband and started my graduate education at University of Bristol in England. Five years later, in 1980, with my PhD in theoretical computer science, moved to the United States, so I followed my husband. He got a position at Petroleum Recovery Research Center in Socorro, New Mexico. So I was offered a tenure track assistant professor position in computer science. I declined it because my son was a baby, a few months old. So once you do that, it sort of becomes tougher. So the next three years, I worked as visiting faculty in Socorro, New Mexico, as well as in uh, Minneapolis. And then I joined the industry, Control Data Corporation. It was a very big computer company at that time. I worked for a couple of years in, as a senior software developer, but I wanted to get back into research. And I believe that I was very lucky. I had a huge break which was given to me by a woman. So I got my US citizenship. And at that time, this was fall of 1985, Honeywell got this huge contract from the Air Force, a research contract to design and develop a secure database management system, one of the early systems. And of course, Honeywell had to interview me and they had to like me to hire me. All three things came together in fall of 1985. And so that's when I joined Honeywell. And since then, for 32 plus years, I have been working what has come to be called now computer security and data science. It used to be, sorry, cybersecurity and data science. It used to be computer security and data management. So over the years after Honeywell, I joined the MITRE Corporation in Massachusetts for 16 years. The last three I went to NSF as a program director both in data science, data analytics, as well as cyber trust. And then I joined UT Dallas in fall 2004. So that's my story. And OK, so what is secure data science? I gave a brief introduction. It has many components. Of course, one aspect is massive amounts of data being collected. How do you secure the data? And how do you ensure the privacy? We had a great keynote speaker late this morning, Professor Latanya Sweeney, and she talked a lot about data privacy. Of course, we've also got to secure the data. What sort of data models, access control models, do you need for massive amounts of data? But what I'm going to focus on, since I have only 20 minutes, um, 
data science for cybersecurity applications, and the parts in red are the ones I'm going to focus on in this presentation. Because you can apply data science for so many cybersecurity applications. And I've been doing this for quite a while, at least I would say 10, 15 years. So you can apply data science techniques for intrusion detection, malware analysis, and I'll talk a little bit on insider threat detection. Of course, some of the emerging areas such as website fingerprinting, right? So you have to apply these models, do training, testing, and so on. And so the more you do data science, more it's going to help cybersecurity. So when I wear my data science hat, that's what I do. But there is something that's very worrying, and that's securing data science techniques. So one of the hottest areas right now in cybersecurity is this whole area of securing data science techniques. Because what happens if these data science techniques are attacked? And this is not a fantasy. It's actually happening. And that area has come to be called adversarial machine learning. So that's something I've been working on with my colleagues for the last five, six years. And another area that's also emerging, which is quite related, is trustworthy analytics. So how do you do analytics in a sort of a trustworthy environment? And what I'm going to talk about, in particular, adversarial machine learning, it's extremely difficult and challenging, but we have no choice but to work in this area. OK, so my first topic, data science for cybersecurity applications. What are we doing? So this is really interesting. So we do a lot of work on big data stream classification. So when I add the word big, all it means is massive amounts of data, heterogeneous data, and data that is dynamic. So again, most of you know in data science, right? We use the past experiences and past data to build the classification models. And of course, we predict the labels for the future instances using the model. And this would help decision making. So data stream meaning examples we see today, sensor data, social media data, any data, even telecommunications data, data that is streaming, video data, multimedia data, and so you have to rapidly make decisions. One of the techniques that we have developed, my colleagues and myself, jointly with University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, is this whole area called novel class detection. So typically in data science, data analytics, you have, you know, you, you uh, detect classes. It could be a black class or a white class or a pink class or whatever. But suppose there is a class that's totally unknown. Because usually for classification, you've got to know ahead of time, right, what are the classes. So we developed a technique, and that work was done for NSF and NASA, for detecting novel classes. So what happens is that you have to uh, do the, develop the classification model, but continuously the model is getting updated. And if you cannot put a particular data instance into a class, then you've got to sort of put it into a buffer and then learn, and then there it is, a new class. So one of our challenges in applying this technique, what we are hoping could solve this massive problem we have in cybersecurity, which is the zero-day attack. We have gotten some encouraging results, but it's not, certainly it's not going to solve the problem. So certain types of malware that has not been detected, say, by Symantec products or McAfee's products and so on, our, mal our tool can help uh, classify this malware. Okay? But still, we do have false positives, false negatives. So I'm going to talk about one example, and that is insider threat detection. This was a PhD thesis with my student, funded by the Air Force Office of Scientific Research. And it's you know, collecting all the system logs extracting the features, and then doing the training. And of course, you've got to be 
really careful when you extract the features uh, in terms of cybersecurity. And we develop an ensemble of models and gather data from the different chunks, extract features, do the learning, and then you detect the classes. And of course, later on, you carry out testing. And then is it malicious or not? Right? So we tested it for malware. And we are now applying it for website fingerprinting. And my student uh, applied our techniques for insider threat detection. And we got some encouraging results. And so that is one area when I wear my data science hat. But as I said, what is really concerning is the cybersecurity aspect. That means the data science techniques could be attacked. So we have received funding from the Army, Army Research Office, the last five, six years, six, seven years, and to design techniques such as adversarial machine learning. So what is adversarial machine learning? So machine learning, right, data science, these techniques, they could be, as I said, they could be attacked. So what is the threat model? There are different ways you can characterize this model. Of course, attacks could happen during training time. Attacks could happen during testing time. But our assumption is that the attacks are happening during the testing time. When you deploy our system, that's when we are assuming that the attacks would happen. And so our challenge is to incorporate some of the capabilities of the attacker. And, and that's not an easy problem. So what are the capabilities? Because attacker is trying to thwart the data science uh, analyst, right? So what do we mean by the attacker trying to thwart? Attacker could sort of vary its behavior, right? Modify the packet length sometimes, sometimes even inject good data. And so the whole idea of the attacker is to completely thwart the data science analyst, the data, the learning model. And so what we did in this picture that you see is that in the left hand side, you have the dashed line is a regular SVM, right? Support vector machine. It's a classification technique. And what you see in the blue line is our adversarial SVM. So that means we have taken some of the attacker behavior into consideration in developing our adversarial SVM technique. And so here what we have is in the left hand side, okay, so you have the positives and negatives, but we have not taken the attacks into consideration. The picture in the right hand side is the positives and negatives. The positives are in red and the negatives are in green, but the parts in black are the attacks. And so what you can see is that our adversarial machine learning ADSVM technique is detecting some of the attacks. Now we can modify the blue line make it even higher, but when we do that, the green parts, right, will, uh, will show up as attacks, which is something we don't want. So we published our paper at the KDD conference in 2012. And since then, we have made a lot of progress in this uh, aspect of research. So when we started our work, you know, in 2012, actually published, but a couple of years before, there weren't many people doing work in adversarial machine learning because it is, it is really hard. And of course, the data mining, the data science researchers, they want to, you know, develop their techniques. And the cybersecurity researchers weren't as excited in this whole area of data science. But more recently, I would say the last couple of years, if you go to a cybersecurity research conference, though the KDD equivalent is in cybersecurity called CCS. So we chaired, I hosted the CCS conference last year in Dallas. 
And we had, I believe, quite a few tracks, at least two or three tracks in uh, sessions in machine learning. The keynote address at ACM CCS was on adversarial machine learning. So it is really, I would say, one of the, one of the hottest topics in cybersecurity because they realize that these machine learning algorithms are being attacked. And there are quite a few papers that have been published to show the attacks that are happening to these machine learning algorithms. Because the whole point, what's the point in developing the greatest machine learning algorithms or data science techniques to find that they can be attacked and they do something completely different. Imagine the pacemakers and the autonomous vehicles and so on. It could be really very, very serious. And so this, these are sort of the two areas that I'm focusing on. And then my last chart, you know, sort of to attend to, to talk to a global audience, why data science for women? So here are some points. Of course, knowledge is power. We know that, right? Data science, I believe, is a highly intellectual field. Why? Because it integrates areas like statistical reasoning. Statistics, I would say, is sort of at the heart of data science. And then there is machine learning, you know, predictions and so on, and data management. It integrates, so you really have to know all three areas and more, such as high performance computing. So it's an intellectually very challenging area. And numerous opportunities in data science, and we have heard that since this morning, with high paying jobs, having financial independence, I, I believe very strongly, having financial independence is a must for every woman. Data science has applications in every field, medicine to law to engineering, marketing, and we heard the, you know, the speakers earlier today and this afternoon, lots of applications from finance to healthcare. Data science also has many options, research and academia to product development to startups. I mean, so many startups in data science with substantial funding. And I would say millennial women, right, uh, and beyond had the flexibility and freedom to choose careers that we, right, baby boomers did not have. And especially with areas like data science, because, you know, you can stay at home and work most days go to work when there are meetings, so it is just so flexible. And so to ask the question today, I mean, I started my career 37 plus years ago, and would I do the same thing today? I would say no, because there are so many other opportunities. At that time, we didn't have, you know, online working or working from home, you know, we didn't have those capabilities. But today, there are so many opportunities for women, and that's why women have to take advantage of all these opportunities in front of them. And of course, I would, we work as a team at UT Dallas. So we have our cybersecurity team, which I head. We also have our data science machine learning team. But some of us, like my colleagues Murad Kantajalu and Latifa Khan, and Rhonda Walls, of course, is our project coordinator. So Murat, Latifa, and I, we work very closely at the intersection of data science and cybersecurity. And as I speak, we are a WIDS ambassador in Dallas, Texas, that Latifa Khan is organizing. We have about 150 uh, of our students uh, listening to these presentations today. And data science for us is the fastest growing area. And it's the largest program, especially for our masters. Most of our masters students, especially international students, are focusing on data science. Thank you.